Okay, so we're going to solve some linear equations using both substitution method and elimination method. And then we're going to say about their solutions, whether they have no solution, one solution, or infinite solutions. So in this first problem here, let's start with our substitution side. We say, okay, well, we want to solve for one of the equations such that we get a variable alone that we can sub into the other equation. So for this one, I'm going to take that second equation and isolate y. So y is equal to 4 plus x by moving the x to the other side. And now I'm going to take this y and sub it into our top equation. So 2x minus 2, 4 plus x, because we're subbing in the y we solve for, is equal to 10. Now we want to solve for our x, or solve for our solution. So we say, expand this bracket here. And then we say 2x minus 2x, well, those just eliminate, so those are gone. And then we get negative 8 is equal to 10. So right off the bat, I would say, okay, no solution, because we don't get an x value. There's no true x value solved for this. Let's confirm that using elimination. So if we say, we in the elimination method, we want to create a variable such that they cancel. So what can we do to this bottom equation to get a 2x, well, we would just multiply it by 2. So now rewriting both those equations, we have 2x minus 2y equals 10, and then we'll expand the 2 to all those. So we say negative 2x plus 2y is equal to 8. Okay, and now if we add these two equations together, we see that 2x plus a negative 2x will 0, negative 2y plus a 2y will 0, so we have 0 on this side is equal to 10 plus 8, which is 18. Well, that looks the exact same as here. All we'd have to do is move the 8 over to that side, and we'd get 0 equals 10, or 0 equals 18 like this side. Okay, so we can conclusively say neither one of these, or both of these, show that we have no solution. Okay, so now we have another example here, and we're gonna start again with the substitution. So I'm gonna solve for y again in the bottom one here, which says that y is equal to, if we move y to the right and then five to the left, we'll have x minus five. Okay, let's sub this in for the top equation. So we'll have negative two x minus six. Let's expand this bracket here, or let's put the y value into the bracket, is equal to negative eight. Now we'll expand it, so we'll have negative 2x minus 6x plus 30 is equal to negative 8. Now let's combine our x values, 6x, uh, and then move the 30 over to the other side, which would be negative 38. And then we'll get an x value that is equal to 19 over 4. Okay, so it's looking like we're gonna have one solution, but let's confirm that and put this back into uh, our equation here and see what value we get. So when we put in our x value back into our y equation, we get y is equal to 19 over four minus five, and that's gonna equal to negative one quarter. Okay, so we have one solution where the x value is 19 over four and the y value is negative one quarter, but let's confirm that over here with our elimination case. So with elimination, we wanna get x values such that, or y values such that those cancel. I'm seeing the easiest way to do this would be saying, let's just multiply the second equation by two, which will cancel the x's. So we're gonna multiply that one by two. Now let's rewrite our both our equations here. We'll get 2x minus 2y is equal to 10 for multiplying the two in. We're going to add them together to get our new equation. So that's going to eliminate the x's, add those two y's, and then add these two terms on the end, which will give us uh, 2. Therefore, y is equal to 2 over negative 8, which is equal to negative a quarter. And as you can see, we could do the same thing as we did here and take the value we solve for and sub it back into either one of these equations, and we would get this 19 over 4. So therefore, we say we have one solution on this problem. Okay, and so now we have a third example. So we've seen 
no solution, we've seen one solution, now let's see what we get out of this one. So starting with substitution again, we say, okay, well, let's do, let's solve for x in this case, because x, we have a single one here. So x is equal to 4 minus 3y. Now let's sub this x into the top equation, so 2, 4 minus 3y plus 6y equals 8. Okay, and then we get 8 minus 6y plus 6y is equal to 8. And therefore we get, okay, well, the 6s are going to cancel out, so those cancel. But we also see that 8 equals 8. What does that mean? Okay, that's kind of strange. Anytime we get a solution where the left equals the right like this, we know that there has to be infinite solutions in this set because for any y value, those will cancel and the number will remain the same. Let's confirm that we get infinite solutions using our elimination method. So like we said before, we, we want to figure out a way to cancel out the x's or cancel out the y's. In this case, it looks simplest to uh, multiply the second equation by 2, which will allow us to cancel those x's. So rewriting both equations, we say 2x plus 6y equals 8, and 2x plus 6y equals 8. Strange. So we actually get the exact same equation. So what does this say? When we subtract these, we get 0 equals 0. As you could see, as soon as we multiplied the second equation by 2, we actually just got the exact same equation. So if we were to graphically put these we would say it would almost be one line, and then let me grab a second marker here. The second line would overlay it right over top. They're actually the same equation. So the solution should be infinite because they're all a part of the same line. So for this equation, we say, therefore, infinite solutions.